true. It's a stretch to look around you on the subway and say, well, we are all one because you see people who are so different from yourself. And that's true on the outer level. We are very different. But essentially and in origin and in destiny, we are one uh, human family. And we're all connected then. Yes, yeah. we are all connected. We've talked before about a plan for the world. Are the seven rays related to the plan? Yes, very definitely. Uh, we we have uh, talked about the plan. We did a whole program on the plan some time ago, and it is, of course, the plan of God. It's God's plan for the world, that, and which is essentially uh, his vision of the objectives that he is trying to work out on planet Earth. Through the cooperation of humanity. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is a plan for humanity, and as well as the other kingdoms in nature, the animal kingdom and vegetable and mineral kingdoms also have their, their part in the plan. And the rays come in to it because they are the essential quality that everything is made up of, and um, it is the uh, the. Ex each of these rays are in, in the process of expressing some uh, divine truth in the world, and uh, so that is directly related to what is working out through the plan. And rays come in cycles. This is one of the aspects of the, the teaching on the seven rays that is so profound and so difficult to understand. There are cycles of rays, and they vary in length from um, several centuries, perhaps five or six hundred years, to two thousand years or more. And these cycles overlap. There isn't just one ray working out through the in the world at, at a time. There might be several rays. Mm -hmm. Presently, we're told the most important ray cycles governing our world are the first, the second, and the seventh rays. Mm -hmm. And so they impinge upon each other. They overlap, and they enable the plan to work out to to manifest there are cycles like dale said there are seven lean years followed by seven fat, fat years, years. Yeah. and that suggests the idea of cycles which are um, facilitated by the rays people are probably familiar with the idea of a new age that we're supposedly entering into we can talk about this in a in a later program but this also is affected by the rays so yeah, they're they're very definitely um, cycling uh, in and out, and as you said, the, the new new age and the old age are represent. Uh, each has their dominant ray quality. So, from what I understand, from what I understand, these energies are not fixated. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't stay the same forever, and and they can change. They can change, and okay. they and the individual who is affected by the rays uh, also finds that the rays change. Nothing is static in the world, mm -hmm. and we should mention that every individual is is affected by up to five rays, not just one. By that I mean, our soul is governed by a particular ray first ray soul perhaps or a second mm -hmm. ray soul of love wisdom or whatever the personality the self that we present to the world is governed by another ray energy and then there is our mind our mental capacity that's governed by a particular ray our emotional nature by yet another ray and our physical body by still another ray mm -hmm. so there are up to five rays unless there might be the the uh, possibility that your soul ray and your emotional ray are, are the same. But uh, most individuals are, are affected by up to five different rays. All of these impinge upon each other. Right, and this is where the whole fascinating study of psychology comes in, out of the, the new, what I think will be, and what the uh, Alice Bailey writings seem to indicate will be then a new study of psychology in the future. It will involve a... a the study of these the rays, the five basic rays that uh, everyone is uh, made up of. And it's not just each individual ray, it's how they rays interact because they're mm -hmm. all, we're talking about qualities of energy that um, manifest through those, the soul and the mind and the, the physical body and the emotional body and the personality. And 
these qualities are constantly changing, and uh, it's one acts interacts upon the other, and so there's it's very difficult to uh, kind of pin it down and uh, differentiate it sometimes. But that's the whole science that uh, is working out. Well, what what practical use? Here our audience is listening uh, to this. What practical use can it be for the individual, for the audience, to make of this knowledge that we've spoken about today? Well, there is a practical basis to it. When you mention our audience, I'm wondering if at this point they're totally befuddled. I hope <laughs> not. Uh, stay with us because we're going to pursue this topic uh, in programs to, to follow. It's very complex and very deep. And uh, there is a tendency among some people when they encounter the rays to use these qualities when they think they get a uh, an idea of them as a way of kind of pigeonholing or typing people, stereotyping people. But that really does the science a, a great injustice because it is so complex. And um, the practical basis of it is to understand ourselves and our own psychology and also to understand others. And particularly f for me, when you remember that these rays are expressions of divine uh, quality, it makes you realize that God expresses his essence, his quality, through a diversity of forms, and that it's wonderful that we're not all just alike. Diversity is needed. Absolutely, and um, if, we were all, if we were all the same, then it would be a very dull world. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not only human beings, but it's whole nations that are mm -hmm. governed by these rays. Each nation has a soul ray and a personality ray. And uh, as I said earlier, I think the human race is on a, the fourth ray of harmony through conflict. Um, so it's, it's seeing that the rays work out in human behavior in the world and the, the great institutions that human creativity has produced are results and products of these ray qualities uh, from down through history we can see these ray qualities manifesting and it's really a kind of a fascinating study if one stays with it it can also help you to understand um, your your potential talents and strengths that your soul wants to develop through you and also perhaps areas where you might be a bit weak and um, not uh, uh, particularly adept. It can help you to, de 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 to determine your life orientation in your career and so on. Uh, there's a lot of very practical understanding that can be gained through the seven rays, and I hope in our following discussions we'll get to that. And if anyone is questioning these rays or these energies, just uh, think also about how uh, calming classical music can have an effect on us. The energy of quiet, calm music can put us to sleep, and on the other hand, it can it, music that's full of uh, high notes and quick music can wake us up and get us going. But well, I also want to say that this show is funded by the generous donations of our listeners, and we need and welcome your support. And that's about all the time we have for our discussion today. You've been listening to Inner Sight. Now we would like to close with a world prayer called the Great Invocation. It's a call for light and love and goodwill to flow into the world and into our hearts. Let's listen for a moment to these powerful words. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. <laughs> 